15 tips to land a high ticket sales job in 2025. I know, I know we're not even finished with 2024 yet, but these tips will be relevant in 25 as well. As you notice as well, I'm a little bit further back from my computer and my setup, right? If I do it like this, it's all I see is the sun, right? I can't see anything. I can't see you and I can't see my own screen, right? That's why I'm further back. But um, landing a high ticket sales job is way more than just investing in sales training and hoping for the best. And that's what a lot of the advertisements, a lot of the gurus, everybody is telling you to buy sales training. Landing jobs is way more than just sales training and knowing the skill. By executing on these 15 tips that I'll share with you today, it's very important that you get an insight on my philosophy. Right. So my entire philosophy is based on just knowing going from zero to one, taking that first step is quite hard. But if you've already taken that first step and going from one to 10, that's way easier. So the methods that are being taught today are one timers. You have a process, you complete the process, and now you have a sales job and you work on that job until you need the next one. And the moment that you need the next one, now you're back on zero. Right. You went all the way from 10 all the way back to zero. These tips I'll share with you today will help you get to one, you know, take that first step. But not only taking that first step, making sure that you stay on the first step when you need another sales job. So we build that foundation where you never have to go back and restart. You can always start on the foundation that you built, and that's going to be way easier navigating through your sales career. Number 15, interview follow-ups. As we salespeople have pipelines in our jobs, you need pipelines for yourself. And this pipeline for yourself is basically a job pipeline. So you track all the companies you would like to work with. You track the companies overall. You track the interviews that you've had, the outcomes from those interviews and the next steps. And you also can create SOPs throughout the entire process. It's almost like a pipeline when we are selling in our job using a CRM. We have SOPs for reviving old leads. We have SOPs for call reminders, right? How to make sure the prospect shows up to the call. So your SOPs for your job pipeline could look like what you do pre-interview, what you do post-interview, post-interview follow-up. Right. And that's quite important. I also interview for sales roles, put, put up screenshot right now about a rejection email I received from a company over, they were making way over $10 million a year. I'll add these screenshots right on my screen. Like any other sales scenario, we persist. I made another offer. My thought was to be around to be valuable until the next round, right? The sales department has a huge churn, right? It's a very high churn rate in our sales departments all across the world. People come and go all the time. Almost nobody does this. Please pause and read through these couple of emails. I was actually later reached out to um, by this company to schedule another email after being sent a rejection email because I persisted. I made another offer. I made it look attractive, even though they choose to do another, to pick another direction. I made another offer and had one more opportunity to prove myself. Number 14. I say this all the time. You don't need sales training to land your first sales role or proof that you've sold before. The only thing you really need to develop is an identity that performs in sales. Right? How do you think successful salespeople show up? How do they act? What's different between you and them? Identify the missing pieces in between, right? Work on those pieces, on what you don't have and what they have, and have those pieces show up in your life. You will have no issue landing sales roles as a newbie. The biggest struggle is when I have roles available and you reach out to me, I can't refer someone to an interview that hasn't shown me that they are capable and willing. 
So you have to commit to the effort. Most never will to reap the rewards. Most will never experience. So you have to be referable. And being referable, even if you're a newbie, is working on yourself, showing that you take action, showing that you're committed. How you can do that? Leverage Google. What do successful salespeople have that you don't? And start developing the things that you're missing. And once you land a role with those characteristics, you will fly through the ranks. And number 13, I just posted a video on this as well, and that is your branding. Your branding is showing the world how you show up. You need public profiles to be seen. You can shape. Oh, I'm getting tired in my hand holding my mic. God damn. You can shape how other people perceive you through content. And this is the best opportunity to show that you are capable and willing, right? Being referable, you're capable and willing. What do you want to be known for? Think about the successful traits of a sales guy and bring that to your content. Post about things that you do on a daily basis and these traits shine through. Number 12, that will be reputation, right? In comparison to branding, you can become successful without branding in any industry. What you can't be successful without is reputation. Most will think reputation only comes from one source, and that is performing and generating great results. But you can have a great reputation before landing your first role. Reputation forms around anything that you do. So you expand your network how you show up when you expand your network, the value in your content that you post, your attitude, the first impression you give others. Everything that you do is based and building up your reputation in this environment. And the goal of reputation and branding is to become top of mind. Like that's the only thing, only methods like that. That's the only reason that we do it the reputation and branding and put so much weight on top of it. So being top of mind, why does that matter? Well, now I see an opportunity that I won't accept whose name pops up in my mind that I can share it with, right? And when people ask for salespeople, at least business owners ask me for salespeople, they will never say, hey, do you know someone who's done these type of numbers and these type of numbers and these type of numbers? They always ask about traits. Hey, who's the most reliable sales guy in your network? Hey, who's the most hot centered sales guy, sales woman or sales person in your network? Who's the most driven in your network? Who has the most potential? Right? And these are questions that I get, but who's, who's the most reliable? You can show me that you are re reliable through just watching these videos and doing what I tell you to do. Like if someone watches a video, reaches out to me, says, hey, I've gone through the steps and I've sent these type of messages. I've had these results, but I'm stuck. What's my next step? And you actually do that next step that I tell you to do. That is telling me that you are action based. You don't sit around and wait for the right opportunity, but you take what you have and use it. You use it well. So when you connect with people, what impression do you leave? And whose name is popping up first, right? If you're connecting with people, they see opportunities, will your name pop up or is someone else's name going to pop up? And you decide that. Number 11, and that is showing up where your target audience hangs out. So which companies? or helping the companies you are trying to help. Companies at any level constantly invest in their personal and business growth, right? They don't stay stagnant. They are always out there looking for the next level and then aiming to level up. So you want to find out where they invest their money. It could be with certain coaches, consultants, directors, cons I already said that, agencies, events, masterminds, 
and so much more. You want to be where they are. Number 10, you want to show up in communities, right? The quickest way to develop new relationships is to find creators and business owners you like in terms of philosophy, values, and message, right? You scout the, scout the industry, look at the values, look at the message, look at the signals other people are sending and presenting themselves online. If you like any of them, you want to join their communities. The interactions within those communities will often be relatable. Therefore, the conversations are often easy, right? Because there is a mutual connection there and relationships just comes natural because you're interacting with people who carry the same values as you, who has the same message as you, who lives by a similar philosophy. But before you join a Facebook sales community, I'm always going to say this, please watch my guide on avoiding scams. That guide is uploaded here on YouTube. And yeah, I mean, Facebook groups is a really hit or miss. Groups are moderated, but every once in a while, scam is lit through. Number nine, this will save you so much time when it comes to networking, not just now in your sales career, but if you choose to go anywhere else, this will help you tons. And that is learn about Adam Grant's giver or taker principle. I believe there is a book, but even better, he has a TED talk online, right? This is a great principle to help you understand synergies between people. It gives an exponential edge by just knowing and having this in your mind and being aware of it or any interactions that you have from this moment on, both online that we're doing now and in real life, if you were to go to any events, build relationships, meet, talk to co-workers, it will help you everywhere. Watch the TED Talk online. Number eight, meet salespeople that sell the products that you want to sell. There is a journey that they took that brought them to this position. And the way you can interact is a genuine curiosity because that's what you want to do yourself. You're genuine about that and ask about their journey. How did they do this? You almost become like a detective. There are so many hidden clues in their journey that you can uncover through a healthy conversation using Adam Grant's principle. And you can take those clues and apply it to yourself. Number seven, find your tribe. A tribe comes naturally from doing all these things. The only thing I can explain what a tribe is, is that almost 70% of all opportunities I come across are from the same nine people. We've had calls, meetings, and brainstorms with all of us 10. Just for the fun of it, you know, part of the crew has traveled and lived together for several months both this year and next, uh, last year. But you just enjoy each other's company. I was, I, I wouldn't aim to find a tribe. Like it, it, it's just something that happens, but keep that in mind that you shouldn't be aiming for one-time relationships. If you connect with someone and you connect with that person, well, stick around that person, involve that person, nurture that relationship and build that friendship, involve that that relationship to a friendship like these are not one night stands right like this generations hooky culture calls it right we want long term like the old ages like your grandpa met your grandma and lived the good old times and stayed together for 60 years that's what we are aiming for if that's the person you truly connect with number six is adding value to people ahead of you and I know everybody has struggled to add value to people ahead of us at least once, at least once. So you're not alone, right? It's a, it's a good problem to have. And it's a problem that most have, right? So don't stick to one format when you're thinking about adding value. You want to 
be creative and think outside the box, right? Because that's when it impacts the most, right? It creates the most impact. From my journey, the value that I added was exposure, right? I offered to interview those ahead of me for my channel, right? Because I already had created some of the videos before and I was creating value for them by attracting eyeballs and giving their name authority, right? I knew that the people that I interviewed are looking to build personal brands and they were a couple of years further ahead of me, right? A lot more million soul than me. So I invited them to, hey, what if I give you exposure? 30 minutes for that exposure, I can ask any questions and we'll post it on my channel. I got 30, sec 30 minutes to ask questions that I had. And the results, the results are amazing. I can tell you right now, three of them that I interviewed for my channel two years ago are in my tribe. Right, we've grown from this relationship to a friendship. Two of them that I interviewed a year ago, I currently work with. They are business owners, right? They're ahead of me, business owners. And I am currently in close collaboration. They pay me, right? So that's the power of thinking outside of the box, supplying where they would need help. Now, the people that you want to add value to, they might need different type of tools figure out what those tools are and figure out the mediums where you can deliver it you can actually do this too by having a youtube channel a podcast a newsletter a broadcast or anything like that but you want to brand yourself so they want to talk to you right the second method of adding value and this is fulfilling the entire business model you can also become a connector and what I mean by being a connector is that you practice the skill to add value to all three, the recruiters, oops, the recruiters, these business owners and the sales pros three. I ran this model and I had enough opportunities to just accept a new role every week for half a year, right? That's like 30, I had like 36 job offers. That's a little bit more than half a year. But 36 job offers, contracts that I could accept. And these didn't come all at once. They come every other week, every single week, every single day. So it's a little bit different. But you'll have endless of opportunities if you can do this right. So the outcome that we're looking for being a connector is that you want to have great relationships in every corner. So what that means, you figure out the recruiter business model and I'll, you don't have to figure it out. I'll tell you it's salespeople and business owners who want to hire salespeople, a business, you know, wants to hire. You can either interview and accept it yourself, right? You can introduce the salespeople that you meet to the business that wants to hire. You can introduce the business to a recruiter that you know. When you introduce salespeople to the owner or the business to a recruiter, you're adding value both ways, right? A recruiter has jobs available. You can interview and accept it yourself through the recruiter. You can introduce salespeople to the recruiter as well. The recruiter finds the right person. And the sales guy that you introduce lands a role. You're adding value both ways. This is what the connector does. You can become the connector and the world needs more of this. Number five is using your resources efficiently. You don't need to pick one strategy, then only go with that strategy. And the three strategies are, or to land a role, is your own messages, your own outreach, right? recruiters and job boards, right? Posted jobs that exist publicly on LinkedIn, Commission Crowd, Indeed, whatever the platform is. But most will think, well, I don't want to do it all at once, right? I want to focus on one and then go from there. But that really minimizes a lot of your opportunities. 
And I got this from coaching with Hunter Alice in the UCM Mastermind. It's just a simple trick that he's shared. And it's a do a five times five times five plan. That means every day you are sending five messages to companies, right? That's your own outreach. You're sending five applications to recruiters and recruiters pipelines. So you're opting in for five different recruiter pipelines. And then the last is five applications to posted jobs online. So with that structure, you can complete this every day and it generates great results. I've done it, right? So that's 15 new connections through all three ways of landing jobs. Five applications, five recruiter pipelines, and five messages to companies that you, that you found yourself. Number four, find a mentor, right? Everything is available to you, but you still haven't made much progress. Finding a mentor is probably the right thing to do and the right time to do, even if you have to pay someone who has done it to challenge you, coach you and hold you accountable. It's worth it. I find mentors all the time to challenge me to become stronger, better, more efficient. You can reach out to me if you want any help or have any other questions. But one thing that I was told by closer who was making 44,000 a month at that time is that we are limited by our minds. But once you see the capability of what you can do or what others are doing, your mind expands. And I haven't forgot about that moment ever since. Moving on to number three, it's practice introduction videos, right? 60 to 90 seconds to kind of pitch yourself during any hiring process that you see here in remote high ticket six, there will always be a, a intro video unless you know that person very well, right? An intro video is a pre-recording of you pitching yourself that you send before an interview because we are all remote. It is very important to be confident and comfortable in front of a camera. And that is what this is all about. They want to see you talk in front of a camera to their customers. They want to see how you look, how you sound before bringing you on as a quick qualification for the interview, right? So you want to practice those 60 to 90 seconds intro videos as much as you can. The more you do it, the more confident you will become. The first ones will sound robotic. I know, I know. And intro videos, every time you film, you're probably going to say three sentences, pause, and then restart. Don't do that. My my practice with intro videos, you need to find a script, right? Make sure that you have those in bullet points, you know exactly what to say. But when you're practicing being confident on camera, don't ever pause, delete, and then record again without finishing the script. Each time you record, you will finish the script until you rewatch back. And then you might delete that one and make a new one. But you don't want to say three sentences and restart. You want to practice the whole thing, right? That's what I'm getting at. You want to practice these 60 to 90 seconds intro videos as much as you can. You don't want to be robotic. You don't want to sound, you, you want to sound in flow. You want to show your experience, but also your character, because that's what, what's most important, your character. Number two, right? Become used to role plays. That's, that's one thing I'm going to say when asked to role play during an interview, it is to show the business owner or the recruiter, what you are capable of role playing is like the intro video will always be a part of the process. When it appears in hiring, don't shy away from role playing, right? That's a red flag for them. Your mind should go straight into action mode. Cause you've done it so many times you're used to role playing, even if it's a made up scenario, right? This is to show what you're capable of. But once role playing comes up, you should go into action mode immediately and be able to perform. It's almost like acting, right? When they have the black and white thing and they say, Hey, take one, take two. Once that take two comes in, you are ready to perform. 
right? That's how you land a role. A question they may ask is, how would you handle this situation and give you this situation, right? Don't just sit there and kind of describe how you would handle it, but ask first before you describe it, or if they mean that you should describe it, if they want to role play that scenario right now, so you can show what you're capable of. You invite them to role play, right? And if they want you to describe it, just describe it, right? But first is, hey, let's just do it. And that mindset is, or that action mode, I really impresses people. Number one is picking a business model to run with. I know, I know. I share with you the five times five times five method. It ties all three business models, but that's, you know, that's a good start. But what you want to do is then to even increase and expand your network exponentially. You want to pick a business model and just run with it. Being a connector comes with several business models, right? Because you're running with all three that you have to connect with. You can pick one at a time and run with it. You don't need to do everything simultaneously. That becomes kind of much, kind of lot. What I like to start with is talking with other salespeople and then involve business owners and then last recruiters. And once I've expanded and got some practice with sales reps, I can move on to the next thing. So you don't talk to everybody, you get some warm up with salespeople, go to business owners, and then you go to the recruiters. But the five times five times five method is very, very good still. But that could, once you become more efficient, that could be 20% of your allocated resources. And then the rest of the 80%, you focus on nailing down on this side of um, business model or the target or the group of people you want to talk with. That's what I'm aiming at. All right. Thanks for watching. If you want an in-depth explanation about landing roles, I have a complete step-by-step -step guide here on YouTube and it's going to show up right here.